What is up, guys? Jose Youngs here, the MMAfighting.com, here for another splendid preview show. Joining me, of course, is the man with the scar, Alexander Kaylee. You may know him from Fun Freaking Fights. And, of course, cameraman extraordinaire, everyone's favorite hipster, everyone's favorite soy boy, Casey Lydon. What's up, guys? How you guys doing? I'm doing wonderful. Uh, doing great. I- Doing I'm, great, Jose. Is, now that you're here, I got my um, my oat oat milk creamer, and my organically grown uh, fair trade coffee beans. Yeah, there we go. I would expect nothing less from the man with the mustache, uh, Casey Lydon. But of course, we're here to talk about fist fighting. Uh, more specifically, we're here to talk about three mixed martial arts cards and maybe a little bit of boxing in there too. Uh, but we're going to start with UFC Auckland uh, fight night, headlined by Paul Felder and Dan Hooker. An, ex- an extraordinary lightweight matchup. Alex, I'll start with you. Uh, what can you? Ex- what can fans expect from this fight uh, between these two surging 155-pound fighters? Man, you know, I know you're not asking, but I hate, you know, I write the things for the site. I hate even having to make a prediction for this fight because it's both guys are so likable. Both guys are so entertaining. It's a really close fight. I think stylistically, it's a, it's just a great matchup. So it, it sounds so corny to just say, oh, well, you know, Jose, you can expect a real fun, you know, fracas uh, on Saturday. But that is that is, I think. Uh, what people should be thinking about. I know we're, you know, everything is about title implications these days. Um, that's the easiest well to go to. And certainly, uh, both guys are in talks, especially Felder, who outside of the Mike Perry loss, which was at uh, 170 pounds, he's won five straight fights at lightweight. Uh, and, you know, again, it's the UFC. So who knows if that merits a title shot if he wins on Saturday. But it is something to keep an eye on. Six straight wins, loaded division. Uh, presumably, Habib always looking for fresh challengers after what happens with uh, – we'll see what happens with Ferguson. Uh, so that's something to keep an eye on. But really, I just say don't worry about that stuff and just enjoy this fight. It's, it's going to be a good one. Now, Casey, I'll put you on the spot too. Uh, this is – lightweight has been one of the more stacked divisions in UFC history. It seems like now there seems to be some sort of direction at least after years of no uh, – the, the champion being inactive and so on and so forth. But uh, nonetheless, this I, – I'm so happy this is a five-round fight between these two guys. Well, real quick, Holder. real quick, finish your question. But you know you just cursed Habib versus Ferguson right now. Who what did? fight is that? I don't know. Yeah. That fight's not happening. So there, there's a there's oh, a poster that, for it. There's a poster for it. Sorry, so it's happening. Fight between, it's not happening. That fight between Habib Nurmagomedov and Tony Ferguson that's definitely happening. Is that the fight we're talking about? Yeah. That, okay. Yeah. I wasn't sure if that's the fight. I don't we're know. I've never happening. heard that fight. Never definitely. heard that fight. It's not going to happen. Going out. Uh, uh, you're making these two names up: Habib Nurmagomedov and Tony Ferguson. Those aren't <laughs> real people. Uh, that belt doesn't exist, and that fight's not happening because it was never announced. Anyway, we're going to talk about more UFC Auckland, though. Uh, main event, obviously Felder and Hooker, as uh, uh, AK said. Uh, what did you call it? A uh, a great fracas or something Fun like that. Fun fracas. Fun fracas uh, between two surging lightweights. Uh, Paul Felder hasn't been the most active given his injuries, but uh, he has that KO win. Uh, he has that 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 win, not KO win, uh, that decision win over James Vick, and then, of course, the split decision against Edson Barbosa. Uh, Casey, you were actually at both of those fights. The first one was in Phoenix where Paul Felder, like I think, punctured a lung, and then you were at that Edson Barbosa split decision uh, at UFC 242. Dan Hooker is, of cor- course, uh, riding that decision win over Ally Quinta. Another fight you were at UFC 243 and then has that KO win uh, over James Vick so a uh, common opponent in James Vick they both have wins over there what are you expecting uh, from this fight uh, that AK hasn't already said um, this fight this fight is going to be just pure violence this this fight no, no matter what happens it's not like neither of these guys they'll still need a couple more wins before a title shot or even before I think they're considered like one or two but this is just it's just this is what actually fight nights are should be designed for. Like these are just great fun fights, and um, and to me, like these guys fight five times. I mean, these guys fight ten times. Each guy will win five times. Like, um, I think these guys. Like, I think a lot of AK said that stylistically, they're both very similar fighters. Lots of violence, lots of elbows, lots of just just good good violent Muay Thai, and um, I'm just really looking forward to this. I'm very happy it's five rounds. Now, you know you cursed this fight, too, because you said the same thing for the uh, Lando Venata and Yancey Medeiros fight. You said that fight was not going to be boring and was guaranteed performance bonus. 
wasn't boring, but there was no performance night bonus. But uh, is there anything other outside of the striking that you have both said that fans can expect? Because, uh, Dan, I'll start with you, uh, Casey. Dan Hooker actually has seven submission wins. I Personally, I think his, his, his submission game is one of the more underrated aspects uh, of his of his of his skill set. He had no problem. Uh, like taking down Gilbert, Gilbert Burns. He has that knee against Jim Miller. Uh, he has that submission win over uh, M- Mark Dia Casey. So he's fighting these guys that, yes, he is a striker. He is known for his striking, but he's also has no problem going to the ground with these guys. So stylistically, is there anything fans can expect or should watch for outside of, as you said, spinning stuff and elbows and whatnot? Absolutely not. This is, this is solely a spinning shit main event we're just throwing spinning things and someone will get knocked out guaranteed um so if, so, if there's, a, if there's a submission it's gonna be because someone got rocked super hard and i was like ah, oh, i'll just choke him out but um i i'm just this fight will end in a knockout i don't know who i don't really care to be honest i just know it's gonna be super awesome and super exciting and this is a great matchup the ufc has presented for us alex are you in agreement with casey that this is not reaching the judge's decision yeah, I agree. I think it is going to be a knockout. I'm thinking it'll be third or fourth round. Um, but I will say, I, I will say, Jose, that I do think the grappling will come into play a bit because I don't know if Felder, you know, wants to play around on the outside at all. With it, really, nobody should with Dan Hooker. I mean, he 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 did a good job uh, for the most part with Barbosa, at least enough to win the fight. Again, I mean, that's debatable uh, uh, depending on what your personal scorecard was. Uh, so you know, he has experience dealing with these guys who are with really know how to use their range, really good Muay Thai. Um, so the grappling might come into play if Felder kind of wants to get in there and just make it a little bit ugly. I think you have to make a guy like Hooker, like Hooker uncomfortable because um, he's definitely one of those fighters that when he gets his range. Ah man, he can really beat anybody, um, and, and and I think that's one of his specialties. Um, so the grappling might might be a factor. I don't know how much offense either guy's gonna get out of it, but as far as um, sort of kind of maybe just like changing the rhythm of the fight, and uh, you know if that if it, if it gets a little too hot in those exchanges, you might see some 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 good clinch work. I don't know if it goes to the ground though. So have either the, have either of these guys fought five rounds before in the UFC at least? Um, I don't. Really call- I- do not believe gone that. all five. I don't think so. Yeah, so I, th- I, th- I, th- I that's what I mean. Why, why I think this fight is very hard to predict because these guys are both super durable. They're not, they can one punch you, knock you out, but I just don't think it's going to happen. And I think we're going to hit a lot of um, new territory when this like round four comes, round five comes, and these guys are you know running on fumes and just bleeding out of every orifice, and their eyeballs are hanging oh. out, you know. So oh, lovely. Um, I just um, I think this fight is just an exciting fight that we actually it's going to be really hard. to. There's really I think it's really hard to um, to predict what's going to happen in this fight. Well, I think you hit the nail on the head with both of these guys are super durable, but I think they've also proven to be like their durability can come back to hurt them. Like, do you remember that Edson Barbosa fight where we were saying throw in the towel and Dan Hooker was still just standing in front of him? getting the soul being out of him until his body just gave out. Uh, and then I believe Paul Felder has a loss to Francisco Chinaldo, where it was actually a doctor stoppage where he wasn't finished. The doctor waved it off. And then he broke his hand against Mike Perry and still fought the last two rounds. And then that cost him uh, several uh, several months uh, recovery. And then he beat James Vick with a punctured lung. So if this fight does go five rounds, I fully expect eyeballs to be hanging out of people's heads, ears to be ripped off, and neither man is going to stop based on their track record where they don't know when to, when to call it quits. Yeah. <laughs> Man, we, we really laid down the triple jinx. Not that I believe in that sort of thing, but I'm saying if you, if you did believe in jinxes, I wouldn't blame you for thinking that we have now laid down the triple jinx and this will somehow end in a bizarre, uh, you know, maybe follow the, the string of uh, disqualifications that we're on. Um, I, 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 you know, I, I, I'm changing my prediction to 24 minutes of wall install with maybe an okay, inside yes. trip and someone will get a takedown the last 30 seconds. And, you know, I like that mm-hmm. guy. So, yep. uh, so uh, 24 minutes of wall install, so four 10-10 rounds, and then someone might get a 10-9 at the end. I like, I like that. Yeah. So, by the way, oh, go ahead. Uh, Nurmagomedov Ferguson still happening, by the way. I just want to remind people <laughs> that is definitely that fight is definitely happening, just uh, in case we've forgotten. It's definitely happening. Okay, I'm sorry. Sorry, Jose. Continue. Go zoom tight because it sounded like you sneezed there for a second. <laughs> um, but anyway, AK, I'll put you on the spot. You do do the, uh, the predictions for the oh. site, but oh, no. main event, you said you didn't like predicting this fight. Oh. Paul Felder versus Dan Hooker. Who leaves Auckland with their hand raised? I said I didn't want to predict it, so of course you make me do it. Jose, that's why that's why you're who you are. You ask the hard questions. Um, <laughs> I'm going to just 
Uh, first of all, remember anything I say here for anyone listening is not for gambling purposes. So please, I, I take no responsibility for any financial losses you may you may uh, take from this pick. But I, I'm leaning towards Felder. I think it's his time. I, I really liked what I saw in the in the Barbosa fight. I know it was close. I know some people thought he lost, but man, there's just that toughness and maturity there. Um, and not to say that Hooker isn't also a mature and experienced fighter. Uh, it's it's almost a coin toss. So I'm really I'm just leaning towards Felder. I think that forward movement, all that aggression, is really really um, becoming his calling card. And and should it go to the judges, which I don't think it will, but should it, I think that's that's going to be the difference. So I think, again, either Felder by decision or uh, like a third round uh, finish with strikes. Casey, same question. Who leaves Auckland in the win column? Dan Hooker, fourth round KO um, by a knee, standing knee. Interesting. So it's 1-1. One, one. I think it's going to be a hell of a fight till then, and it's just going to be one of those, boom, someone just finally gets hit. So... Put me on the spot. I will also say Dan Hooker. Um, I'll say third round doctor stop is just to be weird. Someone's getting their someone's getting their forward split open. The referee's going to stop. Because <laughs> yeah. uh, again, like I said, these these guys are too can be too tough for their own good. It's hard to see one of them finish until their body gives out or the referee uh, makes them stop. So I'll say Dr. Stoppage, Dan Hooker. But, of course, there's more fights than just the main event on this Why card. Why doctors uh, ruining good fights? It's just it's, – it's, <laughs> Doctors and rules, like like illegal knee, come on, just let them fight. Oh, don't even – don't even wait. Uh, just show up and yeah, fight. Yeah, but there are, of course, other fights on this card besides the main event. Karolina Kovacavich, former title contender, is fighting. She's fighting Jan, Jan Zhao Nan, uh, who's, on a, who's been on an absolute tear through the division. Jimmy Crute returns in the co-main event. Uh, Zubair Tukagov returns. Uh, Habib Nurmagomedov's training partner, and uh, uh, as he calls him, brother. Jake Matthews. Emil Meek finally returns after a long time. Uh, Casey, I'll start with you. Is there any other fights on this card that really stand out in your mind? Freaking uh, the, the the lady Donald Cerrone uh, fights every other mm-hmm. weekend. Angela Hill versus um, <laughs> yes. relative newcomer um, Loma. I'm not going to say her last name. How do you say her last name, guys? Look, boon me. Loma's fighting Angela Hill. <laughs> and uh, I think that's just going to be an awesome fight. And I do predict Angela Hill will eventually win, just really based on MMA experience, not because necessarily um, Angela Hill's Muay Thai is is, is is um, better than Loma's, but I think just experience is going to take over. And, um, but I think it's going to be a heck of a fight. And it's the second fight at the card. So um, show up early, New Zealand, New Zealanders. Uh, and so what you're saying is n- elbows aplenty will be thrown in that fight. AK, same question. Any other fights you want to spotlight on? Man, this so many. I mean, you ran down a lot of the names, but like, if, if, just not just the names that are involved. These matchups. This is going to be a real treat for for the uh, the fans who are there live, and, and anyone, of course, who decides to tune in for the whole card. Um, but the fans uh, in New Zealand in Auckland, I think they really got a good one. Um, I, I mean, again, I'm not going to. I'll just say maybe like two, like because I think. Kai Car France and Tyson Nam is going to be really good. Another great flyweight matchup buried on the prelims. You know, not that it matters if you're hardcore. If you're hardcore, you can watch whatever you want. But I do wish they'd give fights like this just a little more of a prominent place in the card. Um, just to say it was main card and create that awareness for people. So that's going to be a really good fight. And also, uh, I think the second fight on the main card, uh, Magomed Mustafaev and Brad Riddell. Oh, my goodness. This will either be the fight of the night. Yes, I, I think it could be more exciting than the main event, or uh, or uh, someone's going to get the the crap knocked out of them real fast and in a really exciting way. So, uh, kudos ahead ahead of time to both guys, and uh, also uh, my my thoughts and prayers to whoever loses because that's that's going to be going. Watch out for that one, Mustafaev and uh, Riddell. Yeah, I, actually, that was my second fight, um, the Riddell fight. Um, that one's uh, that 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 I'm giving that one the um, the Lan- the Yancey Lando curse. No way that one doesn't end in someone walking home with extra $50,000. Sure. Well, I'll spotlight Jake Matthews and Emil Meek. Emil Meek uh, hasn't fought in a while, I believe, since 2018. Uh, he's been dealing with some injuries. Uh, he's, only, he's on a two-fight losing streak, but his one of those losses is to current champion Kamaru Usman. I think that was... Um, I think that was the card in Austin, if I don't, or St. Louis, if I, one of those fights where Kamar Usman said, like, oh, I, that was, like, 30%. Imagine if I'm at 100%, and then Dana White kind of threw him under the bus. But uh, uh, former Venator champion uh, has a win over Husamar Palharis. Uh, Jake Matthews, another uh, exciting uh, prospect. Not even I wouldn't even consider him a prospect anymore. He's kind of an established name at this point uh, from that part of the world, the Australian-New Zealand era, was kind of there 
in the UFC winning before this rise where we saw um, Volkanovski and Kai Car France and Israel Asanya and, and Robert Whitaker. So really for a while, it seems like Whitaker, Mark Hunt, and Jake Matthews were like the three big names the UFC was building up. So he's been there for a while. So I'm really excited for that fight. Uh, I think that has low-key could be fight of the night considering their track records. Uh, but anything else you guys want to talk about? I know we talked a lot about this card, but there are multiple cards uh, this weekend. Anything else you guys want to say? I'll start with Alex. I mean, we didn't even really get to talk about a fight that could have some major title implications. Uh, probably of all the fights in the card, the one with the most, uh, uh, Karolina Kovalkiewicz and um, uh, uh, Jan Shaunan. Oh, you mentioned it, but we didn't really go in depth about it. Because I don't think people realize that uh, uh, Kovalkiewicz is on this three-fight losing streak and that uh, Shaunan is, or I guess Jan, I should say, is uh, has won, is 4-0 and in the UFC so far. Um, so I know she's kind of gotten swept up in uh, Zhang Wei Li mania. And, uh, people maybe were kind of sleeping on her uh, because her, her country woman has been so successful. But she said, uh, even though they're friends, they've trained together, uh, if she goes 5-0 and in the UFC, it's a very logical matchup to make in the future. So, um, so yeah, that, that's a fight to watch. And I know there's a lot of uh, Kovalkiewicz fans out there hoping that she gets off the schneid. So that's that's certainly another reason to, to tune into that fight as well. Casey, do you agree? You and I both interviewed Yan Zhao Nan in Chicago. Uh, she, she she was not the most outspoken person, obviously, but as AK said, she seems to be really flying under the radar uh, when people are uh, fantasy matchmaking this division. Yeah, uh, <clears throat> yeah, Yan Zhao Nan, she has right now a four-fight winning streak. Um, the, but the level of competition she had, I mean, she's won her fights, but I haven't necessarily seen anything that goes, okay, that girl, her next one more win away from a title shot. I still mm-hmm. think she's in the early prospect stages, and um, I really like this fight. Uh, I think it's a smart. Like I love, I love, I love prospect versus vets, and this is what we got here. And um, we're gonna see what um, she's made of, and we're gonna see what Carolina's still made of. Does Carolina still have it? She's still, you know, a top, a top contender. So we'll see. I mean, even just looking at Carolina's. Like, re- like track record. Like her last few losses are what? Uh, Jessica Andrade, Michelle Watterson, Alexa Grasso. Uh, even before that, her losses were to Claudia Gadelia and Joanna Jacek. So she's not losing to bums. Uh, she seems to be kind of like that that John Dotson. Yeah, like we talked about the last. She, she that, the last John Dotson era. She's in that. Yeah. Where, exactly. Like Alexa Grasso beat her, and then that proved that she could hang with the best of the best. And her fight against Alexa Grasso on that Chicago card, it didn't win fight of the night. But that third round, like the last two minutes, those two minutes ruled. Like the whole fight was great, but the last two rounds, they basically just forgot about defense and were just throwing everything at each other. Uh, former KSW champion, I might add, Carolina Kovalkiewicz. So uh, props for AK for pointing that one out. But we're going to move right along. Uh, we're going to talk about some of the Bellator cards this week. And there are two. Which one you guys want to start with? We got Bellator Dublin and we got Bellator 239. Uh, for the record, there's, there's kind of three. three if you want to be like technical about it, there's in a weird way. There's three. I don't mean to confuse wait, 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 people. Alex, well, I mean, wait, I have, how do you do your three? What was this? This is the uh, what was it? What is that? <laughs> this is three. That's not. This is uh, what was that in Glorious? Three? What is this? No, what was that in Glorious Bastards when uh, he does the wrong three yeah, and then like, they go yeah. one, two, yeah. This is Harry. So, so this is me trying to get in trouble with the yeah, uh, if I'm ever going undercover in Germany. Uh, I'm screwed. Covers the Yeah. Sorry, yeah. you were saying something important. Continue, Alex. I, de- I definitely wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think uh, I'm sorry to confuse people because there, there, it, 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 it is. I mean, it is in actuality kind of uh, two events happening. You know, one happening tonight and one happening tomorrow in Dublin. That is just kind of getting split in two and being called two different events. But obviously, for the people in attendance, it's just the one event. So. So then we'll start with Bellator 239, as Casey uh, said. We should keep it chronological uh, sure. headlined by the welterweight uh, fight between Ed, Ed Ruth is, of course, appearing in the main event. Uh, Casey, I'll start with you since you want to start chronologically. Uh, of the two, this seems to have a lot more fights that maybe American fans uh, can get excited for, maybe has a little more implications for uh, – t- not title implications, but like – there's a lot more, maybe a lot more important fights on this card in terms of the their division. So, or like two, Bellator 239, initial thoughts. Oh, definitely. Uh, if if you are concerned about Bellator's you no know, internal rankings or who's going, who's moving up closer to a title shot, yeah, the 239 card is definitely the fight, the card to watch. I think it's the better card overall, better fighters. Uh, I see the Dublin card as more as a um, a regional card, which is fine. I mean, that's that's what it is. But um, this the 239 card is a, definitely a fight. If um, a lot of high le- high level prospects, especially Ed Ruth, especially Tyrell Fortune, 
Um, and actually, I, I love Javi Ayala. I mean, he's on the card again. And um, Brandon, you know, you have U, um, was it uh, UFC veteran Miles Jury on the card? Not mm-hmm. necessarily most and exciting UFC fighter, but he's on the Timothy card. Johnson. So he's, a, he's a name. And UFC vet Timothy Johnson uh, fighting Tyrell Fortune. And noted Pokemon fan Chris Lencioni on the preliminary <laughs> card, uh, longtime uh, watcher of these shows. So, but Alex, can I, can uh, I chime in here? Thank go you. Ahead. Can I? The, how I, the disrespect to Yaroslav Amosov? The, the the guy is twenty two and zero. Casey, he might he might be uh, getting a title shot if he beats Ed Ruth. I mean, I'm, I don't know. I mean, I think Ed Ruth is great. I don't know if I if I'd pick against him at this point. Uh, but Amosov is dangerous, man. This guy's twenty two and zero. I think he's I want to say three and zero or four and zero in Bellator. That's uh, you know, some, something to that effect. Um, and he just beat David Rickles. So uh, he's oh, sorry. He's got three uh, UFC veterans um, on his resume in Bellator. David Rickles, Eric Silva and uh, Gerald Harris. I mean, obviously, the guys a little bit past their past their prime, but still very, very nice, good, notable wins for Amosov. So he hasn't just been like, quote unquote, crushing cans. Uh, he's got a split nod over um, KSW star uh, Roberto Soldich. So. This guy is really. I know it's 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 kind of hard sometimes for fans to get a grasp on these on these foreign guys. He's from the Ukraine, um, but uh, man, don't sleep on it. This this guy he could be next for for uh, Douglas Lima or at least be facing him soon. So then I'll put you on the spot, AK. Who wins the main event at Bellator 239? Oh, Ed Ruth. How? <laughs> Watch out for uh, this guy. Oh, Ed Ruth got uh, this. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm just saying. I think Amosov can take a loss and still be. I just I don't want people to sleep on Amosov. I think it's a very good matchup, and not. You know, I think a lot of these um, uh, wrestler guys that got signed by Bellator, like Ed Ruth, like uh, Tyrell Fortune, who were both in this card, they kind of get unfairly criticized for people saying, "Oh, well, you know, Bellator cherry picks their opponents for them," which is what they should do early on. If these guys, uh, I, th- I think Ed Ruth, all his, I think both these guys, all their fights have been with Bellator. Their pro debut with Bellator. So they're literally a Bellator product. So I'm glad that they've been handled this way. Uh, and I think, but I think uh, he fought Neiman Gracie last time, Ed Ruth. And that was a tough fight. I know he lost, but still, that's a huge step on competition. And I think Amosov is right up there. I think keeping him with that level. Uh, but yeah, I think his wrestling is too good. I think his striking is developing. Uh, he's he's just he looks super sharp, and I think he's becoming a, a much more well-rounded martial artist. But having that wrestling to rely on, of course, is is uh, such a big thing. And I think he wins by decision. Casey, same question: Who wins the main event of Bellator 239? Um, I'm going to go with Ed Roots because I just don't know very much about his opponent, to be honest, other than what Alex just said. So, mm. um, but um, I think Ed Ruth um, is just uh, just one of the best prospects in the country right now, in, the, uh, in, in MMA right now at 170. And, um, yeah, I think this is going to be a bit of a, um, I don't want to say a showcase fight, but I think, um, I think uh, Ed Ruth will, um, this is a, it'll be a big perform, it'll be a big night for him. Well, it's a clean sweep. I'll pick Ed Ruth as well. And, of course, AK, where can fans actually watch this card? Well, man, U.S. broadcast, 9 p.m. tonight on DAZN. Also, uh, the prelims will be on MMA Fighting at 6.15, and we should probably mention that as well. And the Excellent. prelims are very good. Um, uh, like we said, a lot of names on there. I think you said uh, Lencioni. Oh, no, Lenc- yeah, Lencioni, he's on the mm-hmm. prelims. A lot of the guys we mentioned. Uh, a couple of guys who have won those um, – uh, Greg Jackson, the Jackson Wink Scholarships, mm-hmm. uh, Christian Edwards, and uh, Davion Franklin. So that's kind of interesting. I don't know. I don't know how these guys are going to turn out, but it's kind of cool. That they've got that that little rub. And sorry, I hate to ramble, but uh, Denise Keelholtz is in is in a big uh, flyweight fight with Christina Williams, uh, another fan favorite uh, flyweight fighter. They both kind of have little experience, but in the uh, Bellator flyweight division, you only need to string together a few wins. Keelholtz has won her last two, and I think four or five in Bellator. So uh, she's already the Bellator kickboxing flyweight champion. If she beats Christina Williams, could be uh, an opponent for. Lima Lane McFarland soon. Yeah. Well, um, moving. I, I, wait, wait, you know what? Actually, that 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 ladies' fight right there is a, is an amazing fight. There, are, I think there's like 30 fights on this card. Yes. <laughs> yeah, so many. But yep. a sneaky one that that's in that that's in that this card. Gabriel Vargas fighting, the the former Glory um, featherweight champion, currently one and zero. His his um, MMA debut looked great, and he's coming in. Um, he's gonna be fighting, uh, I guess, a local guy at five and two. So um, I'm assuming it's going to be a showcase fight for Varga, and um, but I want to I, I I think Gabriel Varga is an amazing kickboxer, and I'm super excited to see how his um, MMA um, transition comes. I mean, how I what, uh, I'm excited to find out about his, his results. <laughs> I, too, am at a loss of words, Casey, yeah. on that fight. But moving right along, of course, Bellator Dublin slash Bellator 240. We'll talk about these two fight cards as if it were one. Because like you said, uh, Bellator likes to do these 
same cards on the same night, but then one's after the other. It's 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 a confusing mess. Uh, but Bellator Dublin, of course, rocks with injuries. Uh, still not. It still has some names on it, but no James Gallagher versus Catlin or that fight, fight fell apart and was rebooked for Bellator London. No Peter Queeley. Also, he also fell off that card. Uh, new main event, uh, Leah McCourt versus Judith Ruiz. Uh, excellent interviews by P.C. Carroll with uh, Leah McCourt. She talked about Molly McCann showing up and kind of getting a, a, a – she kind of like built herself up after seeing Miley Miley show up. It, it, it rejuvenated the fight week. Uh, of course, Charlie Ward, who's noted uh, former UFC veteran and uh, Conor McGregor's training partner, and of course Jordy Shore's own Aaron Chalmers, who is now, uh, as he said, people are now realizing that MMA is my full time job. So, like I said before, we'll start with the Bellator Dublin portion of this card before we move down to the Bellator 240 part, but. Not the most stacked in terms of high-level fights, but nonetheless has some names fans will recognize. AK, I'll start with you. Of these three fights, which are you most excited for? Yeah, I mean, if we're just talking about the main card, man, you know, i got to go with Charlie Ward. I think uh, Charlie Ward and, and Kyle Kurtz. Um, I think, you know, I know I know a lot of people who only saw War in the UFC are going to laugh because he was on the receiving end of two really, really bad knockouts. The uh, Like I was saying, a sub-minute KO to uh, uh, Al-Hassan, Razak Al-Hassan, and then getting like literally thrown in his face by um, Gloria Bufondo. So, But he, he went to Bellator. He recorded three first-round knockouts of his own, uh, four straight knockouts, period. The other one was in, in the second round. And, and he lost his last fight. But the, uh, you couldn't ask, I think, for a more crowd-pleasing style. Uh, especially a card that that's a local card and and one that yeah people tune in uh, even if you're not you know if you're not super familiar with all, all these fighters uh, from over there and only remember him from his UFC thing you'll be pleased I think either again because I got that he's gonna knock the other guy out or who knows this Kyle Kurtz guy could could be the one who takes him out but someone's going down <laughs> Casey same question of these three fights on the Bellator Dublin card which are you most excited to tune in for if any <laughs> yeah um it's, it's an honest answer. It's a, if if you are a fan of Irish MMA, this is the card to watch. Sure, I'll, I will say I will yeah, say that the, the main I, event. You never. Oh, go ahead. It's one of those. I'm gonna pull a Dana White. You can't judge a card before it happens. Yes. Um. So yeah, I, but you know what? I like I, I like um I like Aaron Chalmers because he's kind of funny in interviews. So, but he's I really also don't a, have. Uh, he's also a listener of the A-side. Oh, I love uh, so he Chalmers. Sent us, he yeah. he, ent- he sent right. us some questions this past week. So uh, Good one. 72 hours before his fights, Aaron Chalmers is out there sending the A-side questions. Yeah. Um, but otherwise, yeah, this oh, – you know what? It's, uh, it's Ben Primus. Is he part of that top three? He's uh, uh, oh, sort of. He's we'll get 240 to there. portion. Yeah. All right, yeah. Then never mind. <laughs> well, uh, Molly, Mc, my, not Molly, uh, McCourt, Leah McCourt, yeah. uh, she's at, she is in the featherweight division. I know yeah. Cyborg just won that title. I don't think McCourt is, she's what, I think two and O in, in Bellator. She does have a bunch of amateur fights, but she's only two and O in Bellator. I think she's two and one, maybe three and one overall. I don't know if you give her to Cyborg right away, but she has a rear naked choke win and a stoppage win. If she goes out there and just starches, uh, Judith Ruiz, no title shot anytime soon, but it's another name to at least add to the featherweight uh, division in terms of a future contendership. Because as Pete and I were talking about on the A side, we were trying to think of a, a name for Cyborg to fight next, and we were like Kat Zingano, maybe. <laughs> uh, but maybe she, maybe an uh, uh, impressive win for McCor. At least she can add her name uh, to that list of fighters for a possible opponent uh, for Cyborg. Yeah, it doesn't hurt to familiarize yourself with these names uh, at 145 because you're right. Any really any of them, who knows if if uh, if Judith Ruiz uh, pulls off an upset, you never yeah. know. Any of these names could be one or two fights away from becoming a future uh, cyborg challenger. And dropping down to the Bellator 240 car, we'll start with you, Casey. You mentioned Brent Primus. He's in the main event of the Bellator 240 car. Former Bellator champ uh, has that sick Google Plata win in my 2019 submission of the year. Uh, Ricky Bandeja shows up. Kiefer Crosby, Beck Rawlings, former UFC vet. Even on the preliminary car, we got Paul Redman, uh, Richard Kiley. A uh, lot of names, but a lot, of course, like you said, more of a regional fight card. Uh, nonetheless, Brent Primus has told uh, P.C. Carroll uh, at the Bellator Media Day that he likes to be the guy that Bellator calls in to knock off these Europeans. So uh, of some of these fights on the Bellator 240 or even the preliminary card, uh, what are some names and fights that really stick out in your mind? 
Um, I definitely Brent, um, Brent Premis. Um, I, I just think he's a, a very underrated, uh, uh, lightweight in, in the MMA world right now. I think yeah. people. I, I know he want, he got the. I don't think I don't think he's better than Chandler, but I don't think I don't think he'll beat him again. I don't think he'll beat him again like he did the first time. And but he, I thought the second fight and the rematch was very competitive, and I still think um, Brent Premis is a, still a top top rated fighter an a level fighter or at least a b plus level um lightweight in the world i think he's just um just underrated and i'm excited to see that fight and you know what i know i know she gets a lot of hate but freaking i, I like i like watching beck rawlings fight i mean, i just i'm i want to see her fight i don't know i know Fair she loses enough. a lot but whatever i'm, I'm always excited to watch her interviews and uh, i think she's a fun person and a, good, and a great personality in the sport so um, i'm happy she's still getting fights and um yeah Bare knuckle boxing champion Beck Rawlings, uh, but Alex, same question. Uh, what are some names that really stick out uh, on this fight card for you? Uh, yeah, well, I like. I, I want to. I'll first. I'll say something about the Rawlings uh, Alina Kalinidu fight because Kalinidu is Kalinidu is interesting. This is actually her second stint with Bellator. Uh, she was 0-2 way back. I think she stood when she was like 19 years old. So then she went back on, you know, back home. I think she's oh, sorry from Greece uh, and won I think three or four fights. Now she's back, and then she lost I think her first two fights again. So I think she's like 0-4. Oh, oh uh, and Beck Rawlings, of course, lost her uh, Bellator debut. So this is one of those rare fights where it's like someone has to win, which is kind of a good thing because I think both of them could be assets. Rawlings, of course, because of her experience, the bare knuckle, the UFC, uh, everywhere she's fought, people know her. Kelly Nude, because she's such a young prospect, uh, you just don't know. Maybe it's mental. Maybe she that's why she can't quite get over the hype. Maybe the competition back home isn't, uh, you know, isn't what it's chalked up to be. So it's kind of interesting. At least one of these, uh, one of these fighters will get their first win and hopefully can build from there. But otherwise, the uh, Bandejas um, Lambo, I don't think I'm pronouncing that right, but uh, that fight, I think that that fight is also uh, going to be intriguing. I think Bandejas Bende is, is a pretty exciting uh, guy, and Malambo, I, I believe, <clears throat> excuse me, is from uh, Cage Wars. He's done some serious damage there. So, uh, yeah, I like a lot of. Um, oh, sorry, he's from Brave. I, I apologize. I, I, had to, I just checked. He's from Brave. Uh, and he's done some he's done some damage there. He's also been on the receiving end, but uh, it's one of those guys you know he's going to be an exciting fight. And uh, I think Ben Day has a really good matchup for him. Well, I want to spotlight Paul Redman and Georgie Carcanyon on the preliminary card. Georgie Carcanyon was was again was in that group of sixteen uh, for the featherweight or, or for that Grand Prix that eventually he, uh, he came up short to AJ McKee. Now he's at lightweight falling, fighting Paul Redman, a local, not a contender, not a champion. But extremely popular in Ireland. Excellent interview with Pizza Carroll on our site where he's like, uh, I need to headline a card in Dublin. Like he has to, and then he can call it a career and he can retire with no stones unturned. So both guys, uh, maybe not anywhere near a contendership, but this is a, I like this fight in terms of just vet versus vet. Like I don't think there's anything either of these guys haven't seen inside the cage. So I, I really, I love this fight. Uh, I wish it was on the main card though. Oh, and thank you for mentioning the um, Bendejas fight. I forgot about that one. That's actually an excellent fight. And I think um, Bendejas is um, still one of the best 35ers out there that people don't really know about. They just think of him as the Gallagher guy, knocked out Gallagher. But yeah. um, I, I actually thought he beat Archuleta when they fought at 35. Yeah. Of course, no, he wow. lost to Patchy Mix, but I think Patchy Mix is just you know, a different level right now. But um, I'm, I'm obviously I'm very excited to see him fight again. And he's not losing to quote, as I say every time, he's not losing to bums. Patchy Mix and Juan Archuleta, two of the more exciting fighters, better, best, better fighters in that division. So even Fran Malambo went over that. Like that puts his name next to some very, very, very high level fighters. So important fight for both men uh, in this division. Uh, anything else you guys want to say about either of these cards, Bellator 240 or Bellator Dublin, before we move on? Yeah. To exciting yeah. fight. How, how to watch them. Yes. Uh, <laughs> I was about, well, that's how I was going to end it. Well, okay. All right, then, AK, how do fans watch these fights? Oh, I was going to say, I'd rather leave it to you to explain it. But uh, I believe the Bellator Dublin prelims will be on the Bellator app, which is free to download. It's actually pretty pretty good to use. Uh, so I can I can recommend that experience uh, if you really are jonesing for that. Uh, li- and, uh, and I believe it is live, right? If you watch in the app, you are getting uh, Dublin live, correct? I'm the wrong person to ask, my man. <laughs> I believe it is live. I'll take the bullet if it's wrong. I, I so you, so you can you can for once watch one of those um, uh, cards, uh, European cards, free uh, and and on time and actually happening. Um, and then uh, belt and then the people in the arena will have the belt or two forty card following that. We will not see that. Uh, we'll get the main event of. Will the Dublin portion then take place after? Exactly. 
<laughs> well, uh, either way, if you no want to... No one knows. It's literally impossible way, to find out. No one the knows. Dublin part, uh, the Dublin part will be available on, I think, Paramount Network and DAZN. And then the 240 part, the uh, Brent Primus part, will be uh, at... Uh, on Paramount Network at 10 p.m. I've only made this more confusing. I am so sorry. <laughs> you know, if you would have told me that the Dublin card actually already happened and we're just embargoed from releasing the results, I'll be like, okay. <laughs> but yeah, would not know. <laughs> but as we, as I teased before, guess what is happening while this card is happening? A very high-level boxing match. I think the definition of high-level boxing between the rematch between Deontay Wilder and Tyson Fury. I know we like to talk mostly MMA, but I would be, uh, I would hate myself uh, if we did not talk about this fight. I, of course, am a massive boxing fan. Casey, uh, you're a big boxing fan. AK, he knows boxing exists, so I won't, I won't rag on him too much. But Casey, I'll start with you. Um, how excited are you for this rematch that we're finally getting in a fight that I thought should have happened right away uh, in the rematch? Deontay Wilder and Tyson Fury fought to a draw the first time, uh, and now they are finally running it back more than a year later uh, for the heavyweight championship. Uh, the winner, who knows who they're going to fight? It's boxing, of course, so that could change uh, depending on the outcome. But how excited are you for this fight? This fight freaking rules. Um, man, the... Uh the way they have the way they have promoted this fight, the way of each of these guys have promoted this fight, is just off the charts. Great. Um, the, some of the promos that I think BT Sport has made, just incredible. Um, I love the fact that this fight is at the MGM Grand, which is the Hell yeah. best big fight arena in the world. This ain't, ain't MSG, ain't T-Mobile. It's the MGM Grand. That the MGM Grand Arena. That is the place. If you have a big fight, especially a big boxing match. That is the place to be, and I'm very happy that that fight is there. And I'm just bummed I'm not there. And uh, But I'm super excited. The first fight was awesome at the Staples Center. Um, I think our own Esther Lynn got some amazing photos from the first fight. One might even say oh. award-winning photos. Award-winning <laughs> yes. photos yes, indeed. from the first fight. And um, you know what? They took a big risk by having each of those guys fight different matches after the original fight, and they both won. Uh, Tyson Fury would know almost at that almost lost of that cut and, um, and Wilder did what he did and um, you know and it's not too late it's like they're, they're not running the rematch too late or anything where like right. oh, we don't, you know it's just a money grab this is this is the fight and um, yeah it's this this could set the tone for big fights for the rest of the year like like this and this is I gonna be the wanna, bar I do want to add not only did they fight since their previous fight they both fought twice they both won twice oh, since their twice fight. <laughs> Deontay Wilder actually like, and they're not like just fighting just like oh who's next like Deontay Wilder fought Luis Ortiz who forever was the boogeyman of the heavyweight division no one wanted to fight him not only did he fight him he destroyed him with that knockout it was like a KO and in a, in a punch I didn't even see and then beats Dominic Brazil and then of course you say Tyson Fury almost had that uh, na well he did have that nasty cut Deontay Wilder vows that he's going to reopen those stitches in this fight so AK I know you're not the biggest boxing fan but you of course you cover combat sports nonetheless so for someone who's doesn't follow this sport like Casey and I do. Outside looking in, uh, how excited are you for this fight? Well, I mean, I mean, from a casual perspective, it almost couldn't be better. I mean, one, you've got heavyweights, right? Heavyweights the easiest sell to someone who's like, oh, I don't follow boxing all the time. Mm -hmm. you know? uh, two, if I recall, uh, sort of the, well, really, mo uh, other Tyson Fury fights, especially you know ones that I've seen, like he's not. They can get a little funky, you know. Uh, yeah. It's not like he's it's not like he's like a, a, a brawler, you know. He's not getting in there and, and like trading hands. It's someone like Wilder, right? So I know the first fight was a little bit more of a tactical battle. I know it was a little actually even light on action at times. I, I believe people were critical of uh, of that. So, uh, but again, for a casual fan, I didn't see all that. So for me, it's like I, I heard about that after, of course. But really, what I saw was the knockdown in round nine, of course, which everyone saw, uh, the the Undertaker act of Tyson Fury, and then uh, and then you know, oh, cool, there's some post fight controversy again. If I didn't see the fight, I'm not. I'm probably not as as uh, upset about it as some people are. So it, it's a really easy sell for a casual fan because all I know is heavyweights, one guy with crazy knockout power, both guys undefeated. Uh, I wish all the titles were on the line, but I know Fury lost those quite some time ago. Um, but at least we got a WBC title on the line. And uh, and of course that if, you know again Wilder one punch you know he's he's got that he can sell one punch doesn't matter 
if it doesn't matter if he can't catch Fury for for uh, you know 11 out of the 12 rounds, one punch is all he needs uh, to put him away. And and again, so for someone like me who's not an expert of the, of the intricacies of boxing, dude, that's uh, that's a huge, huge, uh, huge pull. Yeah, I think you hit the nail on the head. Uh, Deontay Wilder might be the hardest hitter I've ever seen in boxing history. Like he like that f- fight against Luis Ortiz. That punch didn't look like nothing to me. And Luis Ortiz basically died inside of it. <laughs> it was, as, as we like to say, the touch of death. Uh, but Tyson Fury, I think, might be the better. I, I think it's safe to say, Casey, you'll probably agree with me. Tyson Fury seems to be the better boxer. Deontay Wilder is the harder hitter. And in these types of matchups, uh, I think is what bo- what is just so awesome about boxing. Something we didn't really talk about uh, in the first fight Tyson Fury was coming like he he like like Alex said he had to vacate a lot of his all of his titles uh, for for reasons uh, and then he was out for so long to say he ballooned up in weight would be an understatement he had to lose like triple digits or something crazy like that to get ready for the Deontay Wilder fight after taking like just a handful of tune up fights so he basically misses like two three years balloons up in weight slowly gradually loses the weight fights Deontay Wilder. I don't think he was ready for the fight, like physically. Still fights 12 rounds in a in a, in a fight. I scored it eight eight rounds to four, but as you know, scoring happens. Ten, round 10, 8, 10, 9. It was a draw. But Casey, what do you make of the actual skill sets they bring into the ring? Yeah, that's pretty much yeah. it. Um, I had the very lucky fortune of um, I sh- actually shot the the open workouts for the yeah. first fight. So and it was in a, it was actually in a re- relatively small gym, and it was just close, it was just for the media. So it wasn't like bombarded with fans or anything. So you just couldn't move around. So I got to watch Tyson Fury and Wilder just move around in a ring, and I was like, "Whew, that is just like ne- it was just it was just next level." It was just I mean I've 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 been up close watching uh, heavyweights you no know, hit pads and stuff. I'm like, oh cool, they're big, you know, they hit pads, but like just watching Tyson um, watching Fury move around is just like I don't I just don't. I don't actually don't I just don't get it. He's like he's like 30 feet tall and he just just the way he just moves is is insane. And the length that uh, that uh, Wilder has like like I feel like he could hit you with a jab from literally across the ring. That's what it feels like when he kind of opens his stance and just like whoosh. like like it was just it was just phenomenal to watch. And but like you said like I scored actually I, I did score the first fight for uh, Fury, but I get the reason why. Uh, got the draw. I mean, I get it because this one. If if it was Pride rules, yeah, actually Wilder probably wins. But um, <laughs> if you want to do that, if you want to play but that it's game. It's not. But uh, I'm just super excited, and um, I don't know who's going to win. I have no. I actually have no strong prediction on it. But um, I'm very excited. Well, before I go to AK for your prediction, I think Tyson Fury is the best heavyweight on planet Earth. Uh, I think he's just the better boxer. I think he's in shape this time. Uh, I think if he fought Deontay Wilder for 12 rounds before he was physically ready to go, I don't see it, the difference. Uh, this is going to make around. Deontay Wilder is actually closer to cruiserweight than heavyweight. I think he, he's like significantly lighter uh, than Tyson Fury. But the winner of this should fight Anthony Joshua. I don't care. Uh, what anyone said. Dillian White is also a great fight. Maybe may, do Dillian White versus Anthony Joshua, and then the winner of that fight can fight Tyson Fury, Deontay Wilder. That's all I asked for. But AK, who do you think is going to win this fight? Look, people told me, uh, just as you guys did, Tyson Fury should have won the first fight. I uh, did for just time with the scorecards. Tyson Fury should win the first fight. People tell me Tyson Fury is a better boxer. So, hey, Tyson Fury, I think that's the way to go. All I know, I'll say this, I can say for sure, is that I can't wait to see them face off uh, at the weigh ins today. Oh, oh, no. Oh, oh, oh no. God. No. People were getting a little too interested in the fight and, and the buildup, and they decided, oh, no, we better not have them face off uh, anymore. That's, that's too, it's too, it's too dangerous. Well, I, I can't wait for this fight. I think, Casey, you brought up the BT Sports. They, their boxing promo packages are on another level. Like, when you and I watched that, like, 90-second one with Mike Tyson in Houston, and I think we immediately rewatched it right away. So it was unbelievable. Casey, you said you don't even know who's going to win this fight, so I won't even ask you. I think Tyson Fury is going to win. I think he's the best heavyweight on the planet. Uh AK says Tyson Fury is going to win because he's clearly a smart man and listens to me. Uh, <laughs> anything else you want to say on this card before we call it a day on this preview show? I mean, the smart pick is Fury. It's mm-hmm. the logical pick is Fury, but that that power that 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 Wilder has is just insane. And the accuracy and the way he sets it up and the fact that 
he's I mean he's a, he's Waters a great athlete and he seems to be a, he seems to be able to take shots, roll with them, recover. He looks exhausted and all of a sudden, boom, you know. So uh, yeah, if we're going safe pick, yeah, Fury, but ain't nothing gonna surprise it would, me. It will be interesting if the U if if Deontay Wilder does pull this off, he's like he is the WBC champion in the world, but people always criticize him for not fighting the best of the best. If he beats T- Tyson Fury, he's going to go down as one of the great heavyweight, uh, American heavyweight champions of all time. Uh, and if he does get that fight against Anthony Joshua, uh, he deserves it after fighting pretty much everyone they put in front of him without that big money fight. But I, as I say many a time, my body is ready for this fight. <laughs> I literally cannot wait for this fight. I've been waiting for this fight for more than a year. This is my most anticipated boxing match in I maybe in my lifetime out since the first triple G Canelo fight, but uh, we are running way long on time. Of course, we talked uh, UFC Auckland, Bellator 239, Bellator Dublin, Bellator 240, Ty- Deontay Wilder versus Tyson Fury 2. We've talked a whole gambit of combat sports yeah. and fist fighting. You can go. There's even a Ryzen fight this weekend that we Victor didn't Henry talk about. co-main event, Los Angeles that, zone catch wrestling. It's. If you're a fight fan, this weekend is all about you guys. Uh, you can watch AK on his fun freaking fights. He breaks them all down for you. Uh, that's up on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Uh, Pizza Carroll is, of course, covering the Bellator Dublin and Bellator 240 cards. You can go watch all of his excellent media day interviews uh, and then all of his post-fight stuff. You can stick around on our Twitter, Twitter, uh, at MMA Fighting, or Instagram, at MMA Fighting, D-O-T-C-O-M, or find us on Facebook. Just get all of your content of all your fist fighting needs and kicking, of course, uh, on MMAfighting.com. But for Jose, that's Alex, that's Casey. We're out. Don't forget, Namagameda of Ferguson, April 18th. You going shut down. your mouth. <laughs> it's you going down. Go down they have a poster for it. It has to happen. By, like, by didn't happen. see it. Never saw it. Didn't happen. The wait is over. <laughs> UFC 249. <laughs> <laughs>